In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the present value function within the NumPy financial module. And NumPy financial used to be part of the larger NumPy package. At version 1.17, the financial part was split off into its own self-contained module. And basically, it contains a handful of financial functions that are pretty similar to their counterparts in Excel. Uh, they may actually work somewhat better than the Excel functions. So if you don't already have NumPy Financial installed, you can go ahead and run this code right within your notebook if you proceed it with that exclamation point. Or you can just run it without the exclamation point from the command line. All right, once it's installed, we'll go ahead and import it. And uh, I'm going to also import NumPy. OK, and then we'll go ahead and take a look at the version. OK, so it is currently on the, uh, the first version. I expect that they will make improvements and modify this over time. But uh, we can also just take a look at what functions are included there. It's not very big. OK, so there they are, right? So we have future value, interest payment, internal rate of return, modified internal rate of return, a number of periods in some kind of annuity or loan. OK, net present value, loan payment, principal payment, All right, present value, and then an implied interest rate. OK, so as I mentioned, these are all functions you can find in Excel as well. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is just run the help on the present value function. And all of these functions are very well documented. Uh, but I basically just want to look at the signature here, what I need to input. Right, so I need some kind of interest rate and uh, the number of periods in the future we're looking for, uh, a payment perhaps, uh, the future value, so uh, how much is the money worth at the end of the period. And then uh, we can optionally sort of set that interest rate for the beginning of the period or for the end of the period. Okay, so we'll go ahead and demonstrate this a couple of ways. All right, so we're going to we're going to sort of take a look at this scenario. We have a 5-year annuity and every year we're going to re just receive 100,000 at the end of the year. And we're going to assume that we can invest if we had the money today at 9%. So essentially what we want to do is look at okay, well what is $100,000 a year from today worth today if I could invest it at 9%. Okay, so I'm going to define a couple variables here so Here's that 9%. Here's the, the cash flow at the end of the year. All right, and then here's my time one year. OK, so I will just call the present value function. I will input the rate. I will input the time. All right, we'll say there's a zero payment here. And then uh, I will get the negative cash flow. OK, so pretty much for all these financial functions, something has to be made negative in order to get a positive output. All right, I'm going to leave off that optional argument and just say that, yeah, this interest rate begins right away. OK, so a couple of things I'm going to note here is that uh, since the time period is just one year, it doesn't really matter if I put the cash flow in as the future value or as the payment. OK, so we get the same thing as soon as I change the period to five years, All right, I'm going to get a different answer here. All right, and what I'm getting here is the total value of that annuity over the five years. OK, if you just want the value of the last payment, uh, then I'm going to have to put in that zero argument. OK, so five years out, the final payment is only worth about $65,000 today. OK, if you want to see each one of the cash flows from each of the years, then what I'm going to do is make a new variable. OK, and I'm going to change up T and make it a, a list of values from one to five. All right, and then once we're done with all that, I will output my list of cash flows. OK, so there it is in the first year and then uh, there it is in the final year. OK, and if we want, we can format a nice little table. OK, so there's our header. And then I'm just going to print off the year and then the cash flow from that array above. OK, 
Okay, so we'll first format every value in there as a string with a dollar sign in there to keep the dollar sign together with our present value. And then we'll just print things off. Okay. And then once again, if you just want the total, all right, there are other ways to get at that present value of the entire annuity. Okay, so I can just take the NumPy cumulative sum function, pass in my cash flows, and then I'll put something that doesn't have too many decimal places. Okay, so we get a running total of the entire value of the annuity. All right, so basically, if someone tells you they're going to give you $500,000 over the next five years, you think you can earn 9% on it, all right, then you should be willing to take about $390,000 today. All right, so I hope that helps you get started with the NumPy Financial Present Value Function.